Hello, we're going to be doing some bell peppers and um, the red color is actually translucent and then it is cadmium red from Primo. So this is about the right combination, mostly translucent. You don't want to use more than really a third of the color. Um, that's so we can get the waxy look that um, bell peppers have. This is for the yellow which is cadmium yellow and um, translucent. For the orange I use, uh, this is just regular orange from Primo and then I add some cadmium yellow to the mix as well to help brighten up the orange so it's like a yellow orange and um, you can it, it doesn't have to be perfect for the bell peppers, the colors. Um, for the green, I have mostly translucent, and then I have a little bit of the Spanish olive, a little bit of leaf green from Sculpey, and then um, everything else is Primo, then Wasabi from Primo. So those are the mixtures. So I am going to show you how to shape it um, with red here. After mixing it completely, roll a ball in your hands. Then go ahead and in your fingers start rotating more at the bottom than the top to give you that kind of um, tapered bottom and big round shoulders. So from here I'm going to push a hole in the middle of the top with the end of a paintbrush and rock it around in a circle. And I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom. It doesn't have to go around in a big circle there but you want it to be nice and smooth. So there we go. Now we are going to make our um, our indents for our peppers. So I usually go from the center out, center out, and you can do this um, how many ever times you want. This one has four. I've also been doing them with three um, for the main lines. For the main lines, you match it up with the top, and then you do the same thing. So it goes in quarters, and there you have the main ones. If you want it to go all the way down, you just rock it. So you can rock it all the way, and that will give you a deep indent. Some peppers have that deep indent, some don't. So there we go. And then I rock in towards the center, dividing each of the bigger areas in half. You could do this on the top and the bottom. And then to help um, texture the side, I roll this tool along the edges. What I'm using is a double pointed needle, it's used for knitting. If you have any, if you don't, you could easily use a toothpick um, or a bead needle, uh, bead making needle tool. They sell them in the polymer clay section too. Uh, double pointed needles comes in all different sizes. So that would be the body of our pepper. See? That looks pretty cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I just took some of the Spanish olive for our leaves. If you want to make it brighter, you could marble it with a little bit of um, the cadmium yellow, a little touch of white. I flattened it and took a circle cut out. Now, the shape of them were kind of like a hexagon. You could do a hexagon or a pentagon shape. Here, let me do this in my fingers so you could see easier. It's kind of hard to see from that angle. And, of course, the little circle got away from me. Oh, well. We'll do it from the beginning. So what I'm going to do with these little guys <clears throat> is just shave the ends off. I would suggest not doing this part in your fingers. You don't want sliced up fingers. I'm doing this so you guys can see it better. Um, focus, focus. Well, so I'm just kind of cutting off the edges to 
until I get a little bit of a pentagram shape. I decided to do, um, or pent pentagram, <laughs> pentagon. I'm just doing a five-sided shape there. And then I peel it off, and I am going to place it in the middle. I like to wait a little bit, so this has a chance to firm up a little bit. I'm not really taking that time here for the tutorial, but between these steps, it does help if you let that sit for a little bit. I just kind of push down and give this little area some texture. So it's not completely smooth. So there we have that. And this is the same color rolled out into a log. You just want to roll it out. I chop. And I'm going to attach it with the needle tool here. So what I do here is I place it on and then I start poking it in there. Um, this is actually good to do with a safety pin as well. But I try to meld the new clay with the old clay so it actually attaches. And then I bend the stem. And so that is literally our bell pepper, but we're not done yet. We're going to shade them. And I decided to shade this time with um, pastels rather than doing cooking it and doing the acrylic paint. So here is my pastel plate. I have orange. I have yellow, red, um, kind of a pale purple, a dark purple, a dark green, and a lime green. Um... I'll explain. Let's see. Let me see if I could back this up a little bit. Um, maybe I'll move these guys out of the way so you could see which colors I'm dipping into. And one of the biggest questions I've been getting is why are my tutorials so darn long and can't I do them faster? I can speed them up, but then I'm not able to tell you in detail what I'm doing. And I've actually read a lot of complaints on other tutorials about things being too fast and um, people not being able to get the same results. I'm hoping to do enough teaching here and enough explaining that picking it up and doing it for the first time, you can get some pretty good results. That's my goal. So. Here is a little red pepper. <laughs> to color the red pepper, I'm taking a little bit of, um, flip this around. This is probably how we'll do them all. Okay, so for the red paper, I'm taking a little bit of red and a little bit of the lilac color, and I am painting the tops, mostly in the indented areas because you still want a lot of red there. And um, I'm just painting some areas darker, making it look a little bit more realistic. And then I bring those down towards the bottom. So I'd add some of that color in the bottom areas where those indents come out. My hands are at an odd angle and making it's making them kind of shake a little bit. Um, sorry. It would be really nice if I remember when I'm going to film to take the phone out. <sighs> but I walk up those little indents. I add a little bit of shadows to the bottom half just to make the bottom half have a little bit more depth and look like it goes in farther than the top.
and so that's how we shade and it's going to cook a bit darker than how it looks now um, if you've managed to get fingerprints all over it between shading and now you can come back with the needle tool that you're using and roll it back to get out of those um, little fingerprints to get them out so that is how I shade the red one. I usually take more time to shade them. Um, I want to show you, <clears throat> since we're on this side, I'm going to take some red and I dip it in a rich orange and I bring that on the top of the orange, on the top of the orange one. It would also look good with yellows on top, but you won't see them as much. but you can see that it's already starting to color it I would put them down basically you want to make sure you get in the big crevices and you can bring it up to create depth to try to create a little bit of the wrinkle look so see how you start shading and getting a little bit of the wrinkles. Sorry about that. Little girl is still getting over her cold and her allergies. Okay, so we have two colors left. The way that I shade the dark green is actually with purple and green. So it's like this royal dark purple and it is this color green. Sometimes I throw in a little bit of the lime green towards the tops. So I have lime green and medium green up towards the very top just to help brighten it a little bit. And then I take the purple and the medium green, not just the purple, but purple and medium green. I kind of mix it on my brush and go into the crevices. So You don't want to do the purple alone because it will be too dark, but when you mix it with the other green, it's just a nice accent. And then you're going to want to paint those in the little crevices and indents along the bottom. <laughs> so you see you start really getting that, that look. And um, the last one is the yellow. Now, obviously, I'm not taking the time to do every single shading uh, crevice while we're here. Trying to cut back on time. And here's the yellow. For the yellow, um, there was orange on the bottom. So I get orange in the creases at the bottom. Um, mix with a touch of the red. Here, I'll add a little bit of red here so you can see. But um, you're going to want more of it to be the orange and not the red. Add some of that color, but make sure not to completely cover the yellow. I'm actually looking at what I'm doing from the side of the camera, so I hope that everything has been in frame. Um, then, for the top, if you recall, there was green. So I would put green, both the brighter green and the paler green, towards the tops. So do you see how you're getting that greenish? And then you have the, the um, orange towards the bottom. So, so see? So that's really nice and soft and pastel. And those will make some great bell peppers. I would protect it with a satin finish um, rather than a nice glossy one. I don't have satin right now, so I might gloss these when I'm all done. The cover photo will be them finished and all completely painted. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And I am very sorry for those of you who don't like how long these are. 
Um, eventually when I get an editor, parts that I can speed up will get speeded up. But um, I really don't want to miss telling you guys all the parts that actually make them. Like for here, me mixing multiple colors of the pastels really help. You want orange on the main base, a little bit of red in the crease, and then two shades of green for this. If I sped up and just did, you know, uh, a fast speed of stuff, it's not going to be as realistic and I'm really not helping you guys out as much as I could be. So I'm sorry for those of you who find these incredibly boring um, because of the length, but I really, really do want to make sure that anybody who hasn't been doing these techniques before really see what we do so they could learn better. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, as you get better and better with clay, you don't really need tutorials. You could kind of look at something and then say, oh, you know, this was probably done with pastels. Or that was probably done using three-quarters translucent. And you could get an idea by looking at something. So, um, hope that you guys have a good day and take care.